What's up, guys? Potter and Powell here for the other side show. Um, today we're going to be talking to Jesse Wilson. He's a personal friend of both of ours and an incredible uh, performer and organizer for a group called Circadelic. Uh, yeah, Circadelic's uh, Jesse's been out in Oakland, California um, for about a year and some change organizing a performance troupe that's working a lot on fire, LED stuff, and trying to really incorporate uh, a lot of their performance with greater uh, party planning, uh, event organizing kind of stuff. Uh, like they're really good events, um, some of which we'll be talking about on this episode. Um, they have one coming up actually uh, this week, um, uh, May 10th. Uh, so check that out if you're around the Bay Area. It's going to be a really good show. Hope you enjoy the episode. Keep watching, leave comments, all that good stuff. See you guys around. See ya! Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Other Side Show. Potter and Pally here with Jesse Wilson. Uh, Jesse's the founder of Circadelic. Uh, Jesse, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Wonderful. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm from the Midwest, moved out of here about a year and a couple months now ago um, to do you know, what we're doing now with Circadelic in a place that like supports circus arts and that sort of thing. Well, tell us about Circadelic. What's, uh, what's the deal with you guys? Um, we formed, actually we're just about to be a year old now. Uh, we were a bunch of people spinning in my backyard. Um, all had the kind of same idea that there wasn't really a lot of things similar to what we wanted to do. Going on around, we wanted to, we liked electronic music, but we didn't want to be an unpaid, like, piece of live deco, you know, we wanted to be a part of the show and also like throw events and, and outside of that get hired for different, you know, uh, corporate events and, and personal events and that sort of thing. Wonderful. So what kind of arts um, are involved with it? Um, right now we all the performance. Ends. Yeah, right now we have uh, about ten different fire performers. Everything from poi and hoops to begang and fire breathing and everything. And we've got uh, three aerial silks, two male and one female, or one male and two female performers. And um, two of them are also pole performers. And then we've got um, uh, another girl who does cordelise for us. <laughs> What's up, puppy? You got a little dog. Uh, yeah, the we're teaching the dog some tricks. Um, <laughs> humanely, of course. You know, lots of positive reinforcement. Treats. Um, yeah, treats. Uh, but past that, we we just added some jugglers a couple months ago, um, who also do costume design for us, and and yeah, a little bit of everything. We're just slowly kind of trying to envelope a little bit of everything. Wonderful. Um, so a lot of fire performers you know, that I've talked to, it's it's a struggle for people to find work, spending fire, paid work yep. that is rewarding, right? Um, that's sort of it's a big disconnect for a lot of fire performers um, in doing things that are physically, technically rewarding to the performer, um, you know, the, the audience versus what the audience wants to see. Um, so you didn't want to be. The, the background performer, right? You say you want to be the deco, um, you know, and that's what most fire performers end up taking, right? That's the yeah. jobs that are out there, right? So, did it, your evolution on that, did it, were you trying, were you trying to do it that way originally, trying to work within the, the sort of um, party planning industry that's around first, or, you know, did you, from the start, really want to run the whole show yourself? Um, I would say early on in like, especially performing in the Midwest, I mean, there's not a whole lot available, you know, gig-wise. You're either an established group that's insured and well-known, or you're not getting hired, you know, and there's only a handful of those out there. Um, out here, we just kind of tried to feel our way through it. We knew what we wanted to do. And we weren't really seeing an avenue for that at that time. So it was like, you know, we tried teaming up with uh, one of the crews that throws events around here. And, like, we 
didn't really see eye to eye in the way that the show was gonna, you know, go, and it didn't work out. And then we were like, you know, let's let's try doing it ourselves. Let's see. You know, we've all been a part of different aspects of, you know, both that scene and the fire spinning scene, and um, and let's just wing it. <laughs> That's what we've done is just kind of we give it the chance to find out what it's gonna be. Um, the first one, you know, we went a little crazy with the fire once we started lighting, you know, on stage. Everyone was like, we're inside and we're spinning fire and everyone's watching us. I'm going again, you know, and, and now we've seen that, you know, the thing we're going to aim for more this time is, is the hills and valleys of a, an enjoyable performance to, to let the crowd get into, not like a lull, but, you know, to let them have a little bit of their time to dance and, and smaller things like we're gonna be have more feature on like contact juggling the smaller more intimate type of performance that fools the crowd in and then hit them again with something like you know the pole performers or fire or something like that that demands more to to watch than to be a part of it you know um, but that's another thing we're also trying to start stepping past that wall of watch this and like you know, be a part of this, you know, playing with the crowd and like really, trying to engage them more. Really interactive experience that you're like bringing to them. That, that's what we're hoping for. It's really difficult, especially like, I feel like that's where a large part of like every insecurity you have about yourself and about being goofy or silly, you know, everyone, the first thought is like, I don't want to look stupid, you know, that, that, and it's getting past that, which we're working on where it's like, I don't care, you know. I'm doing what I love and I'm doing it in the best way that I know how and if you think that's stupid then I'm sorry but like and so that's that takes it's your the, art take it or leave yeah. it and, yeah. and, and that's the big leap that we're all trying to make now that's that's where you go I feel like from performing you know for people to being a performer putting on something that truly like both captures their attention, but also makes them feel like they're a part of something that, you know, they otherwise wouldn't have been a part of had you not pulled them in. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, so I can imagine that being able to put on, as a performer, really wanting to control and the entire narrative of your performance, right? Especially when you're doing a large group it's stringing together multiple performances. Um, it can be hard to do that if you're not in control of the entire production. Yeah. Um, so I like that you guys are doing that. Yeah. Um, and for for what it's worth, um, Pal and I were actually in, you know, we were around as you began, began this, um, you know, we were talking through, to you through the whole thing. Um, and so it's been really fun to watch the evolution, right? Yeah. From a back, a backyard <laughs> burn, you know, every week or so, to very serious meetings and organization, and actually seeing a whole group of people actually come together with a very solid vision. Um, you know, I, I think you're a pretty, uh, you know, good, you got a good vision for where you wanted to go and are driving it, but you have a good group of people that seem to be coming in and working really well on that, and so that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, yeah, we're, uh, it's, it's just constantly a, a growing process, you, I don't know, it, it, obviously being performers, we all have, like, these big personalities, and, like, you know, there's always the, the battle of, like, confidence versus ego, and so, like, that's been the biggest thing, I think, with forming a group of people who are all trying to do the same thing, but to do it their own way, you know, and that's, that's the hardest part, is getting through all that, and we're slowly learning, and slowly finding our organization and it's just you know it, it's a constant growing process that you just have to be patient with because it's insanely stressful most of the time. like we we are the hardest people to deal with while being my favorite people in the world <laughs> yeah but i feel like every performance group would say that yeah about, you know, the people that they work with on like on stage it yeah. just gets up and you're probably referring to yourself just as much oh, as any oh, of them. I, I, yeah, there are times when I'm just like, hey guys, so I know you had to deal with me for the whole last week, and I'm sorry about that. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's a little bit of like just constantly, you know, confidence and then humbling, and then confidence and then humbling. Um, 
and hoping that, you know, in that somewhere you slowly all start to see that in each other and realize, like, he was a jerk to deal with last week, but I was a jerk the week before, so, <laughs> like, and we're, again, that's just, you know, something that we're, we're constantly working on with a group this size, that con it's, it's, we're never going to just be there, you know, it's always going to be a constant grind on each other, and that much passion and that much direction also means a lot of different directions trying to pipeline. Sure. So tell me about that a little bit more. And so I, you're you are more or less, for better or for a creative lead or creative director to some degree, right? Yeah. So uh, can you talk about some sort of trials and tribulations you've had in getting getting that. Uh, the hierarchy, the proper like hierarchical organizational structure, worked out because it evolves is pretty collectively right. But you know, and, and as I've seen with you, uh, from talking with you, um, you know, it's it's more professional than that right now. You can't just sort of grow it off to everyone. We're we're yeah. Again, that's that's part of the whole growing process too. We um. We did start off more at the aim of a collective, and then what we found is a collective with 15 performers where no one's really trying to lead, but everyone kinda is, just takes forever if anything ever gets done. It takes a long, long time, and we started getting the situations where we didn't have that time, and, and you know, it was, it was myself wanting to kind of take the reins without offending anyone or saying like I can do this better than you know you can, but like I'm willing to, and um, and then the other a, a lot of the other members wanting someone to do that and you know saying that you know why don't you do it, and so we we've kind of gone that route and you know at first um, it went it jumped straight to like kind of me running it from a collective which there was a lot of grinding on that. And now we're slowly like finding that middle ground of where like, you know, I've got everyone to say, for instance, like, yeah, as long as you give me a week, you can you can hire me out anywhere, you know, and, and things like that to where, I mean, I'm, I'm making the decision, but really the decisions have already been made. You know, people say, I don't want to do these kinds of shows, but I will do these shows. This is, and in a, in a large part, becoming like more of a, of a, a talent manager for different members as well as like um, running the group but uh, yeah it was just you know certain people had run things previously and we would try you know different things with kind of splitting the responsibilities in some ways it didn't work and now we're finding that like if each person kind of starts to take on a more you know obviously a more specific role instead of trying to have a say in everything, them saying, like, the one thing I know that I'm really passionate about is, like, costume design, you know? And while I'd like to be in charge of this, like, that's where I'm at, you know? And it's everyone realizing that taking those different roles doesn't mean, like, you're anywhere lower or higher than anyone. It's just, like, too many mouths. It's hard to, like, hear anything, you know? And, and that's what our meetings are too. We always, you know, if, if there's an announcement or an idea, or, you know, we always sit and let everyone kind of get their, their idea or their constructive criticism in on it and then try and debate how do we, how do we combine these things that, you know, what we had agreed on doing and what this person now feels one way or another we need to do with that. Um, and yeah, just every time trying to get better at it. So, I know the uh, so you recently put on your first show, your first full-on production yes. uh, as a group, Interstellar Drive-In. Yes. Right? Um, so I want to get to that and sort of the evolution of that in a little bit. But that was a long time coming, right? So and I know you booked a number of other gigs before that that were not quite, you know, they weren't quite your vision yeah. for what you wanted the, the group to be in the end. So can you talk a little bit about what kind of shows you booked? while working towards the end goal, you know? Uh, <laughs> um, well, we, we kind of, you know, being a new group, wanting to start getting our name out, as well as just finally, like, so much frustration built from, like, failed attempts at throwing our own show. It was just like, we just want to get out there and do it at this point. Like, whatever it is, you know, as long as, 
you know, people are doing what they can to like compensate us for our time. And you know, we basically agreed that we'll figure out case by case payment. And as long as someone's not making a bunch of money off of us, you know, without sharing with us, then we didn't have an issue with being paid necessarily less than, you know, a lot of people would agree that performers, you know, should be paid. And so we took on, the first one was a charity event for um, my boss, Hal at Yoshi's. Um, all the money went to a children's hospital in Kenya, and, as well as, you know, it being a, a large, um, more white collar event, they, you know, they took care of us. Um, and it was, it was a scramble because we had been hired as a fire group. They had said they had taken care of everything in Walnut Creek for us to do fire, and we find out the week beforehand, no fire. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. almost every time I perform. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and you ask the person, like, are you sure? So and, and they're like, you know, yes, I, I know the fire marshal, he's a friend. And then it turns out fire marshal was fine with it, but the city's not, you know. Um, and not even for outside. And, and so then it was like, well, what do we do? You know, try to throw together some more exciting costumes. Try and last minute come up with some glow show stuff. And we just... We just went out and played, to be honest, all night. Like, had a good time. They hadn't really seen much of that. We brought basically a rave circus, you know, like, it was what it essentially ended up being. And, you know, we did some cool things. We had our belly dancer, Michelle, was up on the bar balancing sword, and, you know, people were buying drinks underneath and around her. And, and that was really cool to enter in and, um, you know, put, throwing different members on stage and really trying to, to keep stoking up the party because it was... I mean, it was, for, for lack of a better term, it was, it was mildly stuffy people trying to have fun and loosen up, and, you know. It was a charity event in Walnut Creek. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Sorry, I, Walnut Creek's fun. <laughs> it's a um, beautiful place. Just don't believe you can do fire there, because you can't. Yeah, you can't do fire you there. You can't do fire there. Um, and then we went on and, uh, and picked up, through a friend of mine, uh, Glow Winter Wonderland, which was... A really awesome and stressful, incredible event for the organization level we were at to do three nights a week for two solid months and then a solid week during Christmas. I would say don't take that on if you've only been a group for like two or three months. <laughs> All right, quickly tell people what Global Winter Wonderland is and the, the yeah. level of this production. Um, it, it's, it's kind of something else. It's um, this group... Uh, international cultural something or other um, but they're a large company that put on last year it's giant paper lanterns of like you know monuments around the world and and different you know there was like one where panda bears had like a I don't know like a playground they were like seesawing and stuff lots of cool stuff and um I saw they, a giant sculpture of a dragon and one of a phoenix made out of uh, only the China teacups yeah, and China teacups. Yeah. Yeah. That is epic. It was yeah. really beautiful. It was huge, too. It wasn't just like, oh, yeah. like a little... Massive. Like, yeah. <laughs> and like, well done. It, it was wasn't... Really um, beautiful art. It was, it was gorgeous. But and exactly they had beautiful. all kinds of different um, performers, uh, a lot of, you know, great, you know, great magicians and jugglers, and um, they had uh, a Chinese opera, and like all these awesome things. Um... And, and we got to perform on a double-decker stage in front of a double-decker carousel. It was like a really cool setup, and it went really well for us. Despite all the stressful, you know, we, you know, at the first night we had some fire issues, like nothing serious, but... Hang on, here's what happened. <laughs> Jesse called, well, Jesse posted on Facebook that he was short a few performers for Global Winter Wonderland. <laughs> He had been asking me to perform for a little bit. I'm a nice guy. I said, sure, I'll step up. I've got time this weekend. And I go. We go. I have a really good time. Everyone's really jazzed. This is like their first, like, you get a big fire performance publicly. I get out there. The finale. I do my piece. It's super fast. I yeah. go to a punk song that's like a minute and a half. So and good. I just raged it, you know? <laughs> and then I get out for the finale, and I'm just sort of rocking it out, trying to entertain some little kids in the front row. <laughs> And Let me point out, I did, slip. I did put right. him in a long sleeve hoodie, Honestly, I don't doing, sleep. doing fire. I, that was my fault. <laughs> big guy, I get sweaty. Boy goes out of my hand. What am I gonna do? 
bounces. Very, it's no problem. People are plenty far back. Yeah. Anyway, it was my fault. First night doing it, and I thought that I ruined the whole thing. So, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, <laughs> talk about how much I messed things up for you and how hard it was for you to fix it. It really, it really, really. No, 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 bring it on. Like, I want to know. I messed it up. It was really, you were pissed at me and you were being really cool and not like, I was actually, it, but, like, no, me, I, I wasn't <laughs> pissed because, first off, it, it got to show that, like, you know, you've been doing this quite a while. I, you're a very proficient spinner. Anyone makes a mistake, and that was a big thing for for not only myself but the group to see. It was a good part of the learning experience, as well as like we show up the next day. They've said nothing to us about it. Like you said, it was a minor thing. Half the people didn't even see it. Unfortunately, the safety director did, and the head of the park apparently wasn't aware that there were even fire performances going on. Last year wasn't an another issue. one of those things, yeah. right? Oh, fire is great. We got it all taken care of, and then oops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Last year they did it in the park, which didn't require a fire permit, and the city didn't require a fire permit anyway. But the owners of the actual park inside required a permit, and that was going to take longer than by the time we would have gotten it, it would have been almost over. But um, it was just we show up the next day, and they're like, no fire. We're like, oh, okay, so back to doing. LED, you know, which anyone who's done an LED show knows that if you don't put it together, you just look like a bunch of ravers on stage where families around are going like, why are they up there, you know? And we, it was one of our most humbling performances. We actually said, like, we'll go and perform throughout the park with LED, you know, do like a, a strolling parade of lights, but like, we're not getting on that stage again. We don't have that show put together yet. We had our fire show. And then it, it just took that week of like going back and forth and being like we're insured, you know, nothing happened. If you look, we were on top of it. We extended the barrier out another 15 feet, which should have been done in the first place. And, and they, you know, they sent out a couple extra safety people to be there at all times. We threw a couple extra fire safeties. And, you know, it, again, it, it wasn't... It wasn't an issue really because of the fact that it it wasn't it was a small thing that anyone could have done. I wasn't I wasn't mad at you. I was glad you helped us out with the position. But that was part of the learning process as well as like I said, three nights a week with a brand new crew. And that's the thing is you think like, okay, we're doing two half hour performances at seven o'clock at night. But that then you start thinking, you know, it's an hour and a half drive. You need like an hour beforehand to stretch and set up and be nice and comfortable in your space their hair and makeup so suddenly you have to get together at noon three days so a week the whole weekend yeah, is yeah. pretty much into that yeah by sunday night you're like you know let's uh let's just let loose and hang out before we all kill each other next right. weekend you know <laughs> and but it was a quick learning experience to like really see that first off we could pull it together when we had to with next to nothing but also we really don't want to do that and be under those stressful conditions Cool. I'm glad that was a really. I'm glad it hit. Up. Not, you know, not, I know it didn't really mess things up, and glad it was a learning experience. Um, because, yeah, that that flow performance on stage was excruciating. Um, <laughs> oh, you were there. But for that. I, no, I was there for that one. I, you know, I helped help right my wrong. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, as a a new group with a lot of members who haven't had you were had several people that was their first time on stage that night. Um, at yeah. least one person. Yeah. It was their first time on stage. A few other people, pretty fresh to actually doing fire performing. Yeah, to actually um, getting on the stage. They had done it plenty in spinning circles sure. and that sort of thing. But like, this was one of the first, you know, if not the first, the first few, and first time for an Lighting audience up, like that. Too, yeah. You know, yeah. Right. So, you know, excruciating, but they, everyone killed it. Right. Yeah. Still brought it as hard as they could. Yeah. Um, and then. When it turned into the parade around, you know, everyone made it work, rocked it as hard as they could, and, you know, I, at that point I was like, okay, really, like, really, like, you've got a good team, I was like, got a good, like, drive, and, you know, I, it was impressive for me you know, to see all of that, too. Yeah, it definitely, like, I, I was... it was a huge production, y like, I, yeah. I, watching the whole thing, like, weekends <laughs> for months, too, like, two months, right? Yeah, and the, we, got, we got a heads up, like, a month and a half beforehand, like, hey, we still need people, and so it was, it was such a scramble, and I definitely am on the same, the same, you know, 
point as you on like being super impressed and grateful for the amazing performers that like are part of this group and that like I'm lucky enough to be able to work with and and you know kind of direct in different ways is really really an incredible part and why we can continue to roll forward even with these huge like face plants. <laughs> well, I mean your next production wasn't really a face plant. No, uh, <laughs> it, Interstellar went as well as we could have hoped that it could have gone as a first production on that level, as, you know, being up against not knowing and being on a date that both pulled the, the party, you know, electronic crowd in one direction, as well as the kind of burner performer crowd in another direction, um, and, and, and not really knowing entirely what our show was, you know. And we had a blast, and everyone that came out seemed to have a really good time. And even the Metro said that, you know, usually an electronic show is hell night for us here, you know. <laughs> and we didn't have, you know, any sort of issues with anyone getting injured or, you know, sick uh, off of whatever it was, you know. And it was a really, really fun night, you know. It was one of the, my favorite nights that I've ever had. One of those nights where you just, like... This, this is my life. This is for real. Like this is pretty incredible, and and that's that's what the vibe that we've kind of carried forward and tried to like now expand. Like we did that. We there's that milestone, but like there's a lot more that can be done with it, and trying to like not not get into any sort of like yeah you know comfortable spot of feeling like we don't need to really push it past that. Because for all it was, it still could have been so much more. But that's, you know, we're just now learning how to do choreography as a group. That's a whole other beast, you know. It takes, you know, putting everyone on the level of whatever, you know, each performer is able to do in their own respect and trying to pull that together. That's a whole other super stressful aspect that, you know, that we're working on. That one... That one's taking time. <laughs> oh, no, that's more. Train, train, train time, train time. No, that one's not so bad. <laughs> Just a little guy. So, so, so tell us more about uh, like Interstellar. Like, what was the actual party like? What kind of you know production did you put on there? Um, you said it was at the Metro. In yeah. Atlanta? It's at the Metro uh, Opera Theater. They Tom at the Metro has been really great to us. He's loved the idea from day one, supported us, you know, really taking care of us. Um, Oakland Metro Opera House, one of the yeah. sickest venues in Oakland. Yeah. They're really, really great people there. They support, you know, real music. They support real art. Um, Tourette's Without Regrets is an incredible show that showcases talent from, you know, we've performed there uh, last year, or last weekend or ugh, last month it was you know members of Vodvir society you know everyone takes part there and it's the metro again supporting that sort of like alternative yeah. art and circus and you know spoken word and in, in every direction it's really an incredible venue but they um they've taken care of us and really give us the freedom to do what we want to do with the night you know he doesn't really try to micromanage so we um we had fire we had uh, a, an LED burlesque routine from um, a group in SAC called Lunar Roots. Uh, we had a couple B-Boys out that would be out again, or Boros. Um, and it, it's just, and this time we've got um, members of Ministry of Flow will be out uh, performing and doing a set. We're trying to, you know, it is a showcase for us. You know, it is, it is at heart our show, but it's also now becoming this thing where we want to branch out and like first off it, it, it stops that sort of thing where you know a hundred different events like these happen to happen and happen on the same night and instead sharing and being like you know guys we all want this to happen so why don't I give you guys this DJ and we'll take this DJ and throughout the night share it instead of everybody trying to you know claim their own and that's been a really cool aspect of, of getting away from that sort of like you're a, a, a performance crew, and we're a performance crew, so we're in competition, you know? Where it's like, you love what you do, we love what we do, and let's just kind of, you know, share the space, share the time. 
and that's becoming a large part of what's like developing the show and it's it's pushing the different groups in it to come out there because nobody wants to be you know the, the group that no one remembers from the day and it, uh, the ministry of flow has some incredible performers and they're bringing you know some acts that they're planning on bringing to the expo so they're like well rehearsed choreographed routine so it's pushing us to be like we don't want to get shown up at our own party you know and they've got a number of different pieces in the expo that's yeah. coming up too. yes yeah cool yeah that's gonna be a really cool party i um i, I think it will be i think this one's definitely going to to step ahead um in the direction of a more put together starting to more understand what it is sort of show and that's that's just where we're gonna we're gonna try and keep it going every three months you know give people enough time to get some excitement again and us to breathe <laughs> and like get our heads back on and and uh, continue like evolving this show until it's something that you know I can fully feel like is a well done entirely performance based show and then it'll be time to do something else. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So you, you said you're doing a show every three months? That's that's right now what the, the formula has kind of been. Um, after this one, we think we're going to go to a series we're calling Oddity that's going to be more of a darker carnival. This one, The next one that we're doing, um, it's going to have a second room where we're going to have some, some pain acts and some you know suspension, yeah. some of the... It's going to be in the second room, because personally, I can't watch a lot of that stuff. <laughs> I appreciate it. I, I, it blows my mind, but I can't watch it. And so that, and we'll have some darker style, you know, flow arts going on in the main room and, and a, a kind of darker feel overall. Like, a, we're thinking of like kind of a depression era carnival. Interesting. Like that sort of happy, sad sort of, you know. <laughs> happy sad clowns the happy sad clowns the happy sad you know entire environment where it's like creepy but fun that's a really cool concept I, I, interstellar is a really cool fun concept too it's kind of out there right a 50s space dragon kind of thing yeah Pretty yeah fun yeah like, we wanted to, to do something like what's we all, we all love the, the 50s style like i think everyone can can agree it was such a cool stylized era and like so we wanted to do that, but how do we do that and tie in, you know, what we do, but it, as well as make it like something a little stranger and different. And we kind of came to this, what if it was a drive-in in the middle of the galaxy that like pulled these, these 50s inspired like aliens and, you know, and whatever else, these subcultures. And, uh, and so we did like leather jackets with like a wire trim. And, and you know that sort of thing and and this time I think we're gonna play a little more to the to the movie aspect of like characters that might be out of these sci-fi films these cool. 50 sci-fi films and kind of explore that a little more Do you know Jonathan Alvarez has a robot costume uh, I did not know that but <laughs> it does not costume. surprise me it's okay. amazing it's really it's good we'll, we'll have it. to get you guys to talk <laughs> yeah <laughs> so how soon after the first one did you know that you were doing the second one and like know when it was going to be stressfully enough we knew before the first one um it was already always planned to be a series but my investor in the hype that it was starting to get a little bit and the vibe and everything he said why don't we just continue this why do we why are we even why don't before people leave the door you know we can announce that in three months we'll be doing this again you know we were even hoping to have some some little handouts printed at the, the next one with the date, but that didn't happen as well as we'd like. Um, but yeah, we were, I already knew like, okay, well, as soon as this one's done, take a week, take a breath, and then like get going on the next one. Um, but that's a, a nice feeling to have going in because then I could watch the show and, and on top of already trying to see like, where is this gonna need to grow in the next one? like knowing that there is going to be a next one and that I need to be in that mindset as well as enjoying it while I'm there. So had you already made the decision that it was going to be at the Metro again, just from your experience working with them pre-show, you, you knew they were kind of... Yes, with. Tom had, had thrown it out um, to, to continue working with us because, you know, like I said, they do have Tourette's, which has one aspect uh, really heavy on, like, 
you know, spoken word and, and, and stand up and beatboxing with, you know, as well as performances and everything. And then, you know, there's the Hood Slam that's got some performers throughout and, you know, the, the goofy wrestling, but it's another. So the next thing he's kind of wanting to work into and in almost, you know, bi-monthly or even monthly is a more circus-based show that, that puts on display a lot of the alternative arts. So in the future, that might be a direction we go with it where it's less of a, a music-based party um, and just do those again every couple months, but do a, a, possibly even a regular show that, that just showcases the different performers and groups throughout. <laughs> we are in the middle of every avenue of transportation. And that's really impressive the the venue is that I mean the metro is great but yeah. really says something about you I would think that they without having seen the show were willing to all right let's sign you up for the next one and let's do you know yeah they have no idea what kind of drinks you're bringing in drink money you're bringing in you know yeah those things so it says a lot about I think where your vision is or if not your organization I mean, you know it's one of them. Like yeah. he saw something, you know. He respects honesty too. Like I, I, I'm new. I, I am fully honest that like I'm learning as I go. I've done things over the years with like booking bands, and you know more in the that sort of area. But uh, but I, I, I have never really done anything like this. I was in theater in high school, you know. So I've got little tidbits that I can pull from. But I just told him I was like, it's the. Uh, it's it's my first time. It's it's you know just getting started. But here's what I'm trying to do, and he appreciates that that I'm not like oh we are gonna pack it out. You know, mm. I I just have never tried to oversell myself for the group, and I, and I think that's important when you're getting started is is not trying to overhype and disappointing people. I would rather you know them expect less and get more. And that's a big part of why, you know, Tom and I have enjoyed working together is he supports DIY, which you know in the beginning, it's not necessarily a money maker, you know, it, it's, sure. it will bring some in, it will support, you know, I'm going to pay a rental regardless, you know, he's going to get some money, you know, but at the end of the day, it's growing this sort of thing and it, it's that sort of Oakland vibe of, yeah, we need to make money with it, but we also want to support, you know, what's going on in this you know city and what's developing with it and that's a place that definitely does that that's awesome cool man all right so date time of the next one may 10th at the metro again um we right now are just switching over to 15 dollars pre-sales on the event page it's 20 at the door um it, we get started at we open the doors at 8 30 and really get started at like nine o'clock but that's, you know, first DJ's got a performance group with them. We get started right off the bat. There will be a second room with, um, you know, some different music, some more laid back ambient performances. Um, and yeah, just gonna go from nine until two in the morning and everything from glitch and bass music to electro swing and lots of different performers of, you know, we're gonna be working on like some intergroup performances, I think, as well. Cool. The B Boy and I are working on a fire rope dart oh, with B Boying, cool. yeah, nice. and, and, cool. and trying to do some different things. But yeah, it's it's definitely fun. And then at the end of the night, we're gonna do what we did last time. Just last 15 minutes, we pulled everyone on stage, and everyone just like got down. And you know, it stopped being about anything. But like, we had a good time tonight, didn't we? Like, let's dance. Let's you know, send it out on like the right the right foot. And it was really really great way to end it and I think that's going to be kind of our stamp at the end of the night on events great man so check the description uh, Circadelic's information is going to be down there uh, keep an eye on the Oakland Metro Opera House's calendar of events they have really good shows and it's another way to find out when Circadelic's going to be there putting on really great productions thank you <laughs> dude thank you really great having you on the show man thank, thank you. you so much dude I really appreciate it it's a good time. Great time. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right. Be well, everyone. Talk to you guys later.
Three, two, one. Cool. <laughs> nice. I feel honored. As you should. You have to run? Thanks for coming out, buddy. Thanks. Sorry about her. Bye. Nice to see you guys.